This episode is scripted by John Ruth and Neil Fisher and is narrated, recorded and edited by Neil Fisher. Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 38 in which we will be going through chapter 38, The Thunder Breaks. This episode is being recorded near our new home in Lewis at the end of an exhausting week, so I'm more grateful than ever to John Ruth for his script assistance. This is one of the most military chapters in character in Watership Down, so I have been very happy to let his experience come through in the commentary. And if the precise military terminology used is quite American in character, I can live with that. Over half the listenership of this podcast are in the States, and frankly, he's more than earned it. I'm recording this outdoors on open downland. It seems appropriate somehow. If any dog walkers come across me, they'll think I'm a total nutter, but I'm beyond caring. Let the climactic third thunder chapter commence. Chapter 38. The Thunder Breaks. The pre-chapter quote is spoken by Cassius in Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. A modern English version of this quote would be, quote, Now let the wind blow, waves swell and ships sink. The storm has begun and everything is at stake, end quote. The relevance to this chapter is obvious, if you've already read it. The chapter opens along the riverbank of the test. Hazel is nervous. He's the leader. He's a chief rabbit on a forward mission, well away from his fledging warren, and he's finding out that waiting is very tough. Kiha is letting him know what we just heard in chapter 37, namely the part about tonight being the night. A link-up, such as the need of bigwigs now improvised escape to connect with the watership down rabbits at the River Test, can be a very difficult action that is usually just a task of a larger military operation. Hazel knows that tonight is the night, but does not know exactly when. Silver provides some good advice. Hazel's reasoning is also very much on point and perfectly complements Bigwig's espionage activities. Blackberry also chips in with some good advice. That advice is to take a group further forward to near the getaway boat. What Blackberry is advising Hazel to do in military terms is to take a group forward and establish an obje- objective rally, rally point, a place very close to an objective where you can still stay concealed and still defend yourself if needed. ORPs are a standard procedure in nearly any infantry operation. As before in Watership Down, you can't help but sense Adam's military experience. Hazel is such a great leader and is always willing to set the example. Fiverr advises him to stay on the boat, mainly due to his leg injury. He hesitates, and for all the right reasons. If things go awry and rabbits get hurt, Hazel feels that it's his responsibility to be among them. In the end, it takes the combined logic of both Fiverr and Blackberry to convince Hazel to stay in the boat. Hazel again states that if Bigwig does not come out tonight, he'll go into Ephrafa. He said this before, and the reader might have thought it was just the right thing to say at that moment. It's clear that he really means it, however insane such a plan might be. The weather is continuing to build. Just like the Ephrafans, it's making our heroes a bit nervous as well. Silver says something very well put about not panicking and that the stakes are never seeing their home warren again. This was a smart thing for him to say, and Silver's steadfastness is very clear. We now cut to Ephrafa, and Bigwig is being woken up in the worst way possible. Heisenthal is there and says that Nell Filter has been arrested. After what we read in the last chapter, this is not really a surprise, but it could mean ruin for the whole plan. Bigwig keeps his cool, telling Heisenthal to gather all the escaping does to his burrow and to stay quiet. He soon encounters Captain Chervil, and we are relieved that Bigwig's role has not yet been betrayed. In fact, Bigwig is the only Owlsler member from the Mark, besides Chervil, that knows what is going on. Bigwig's orders are to basically alert the sentries, keep the Mark underground, no Silphlay, and to tell Bartia that Blackavar won't be needed and get rough if needed. The paranoia of Ephrafa is actually working in his favour, and he's in a unique position. Churville's off to see the dreaded council. Anything Bigwig decides to do will seem legitimate. Bigwig engages with Marjoram, who is clearly uncomfortable receiving instructions from the relatively new Owlsler officer. Bigwig simply orders him around, and Marjoram, in true Afrafan fashion, does what he is told. At this point, Bigwig commits to the escape happening there and then, as he issues orders that go directly against what he was ordered to do. He says that Silphlay is early rather than cancelled. He immediately goes up to link up with Heisenthal, 
who has wasted no time in gathering the does. He issues instructions to the Kraer does to get moving, and then does so himself. Bigwig then closes on Blackavar, who he'd previously heard coming up the run, slips in between him and the unsuspecting Bartia, and then viciously attacks Bartia. Even though Bartia is an effective fighter, Bigwig bests him and then tells him that he's lucky he will not, that he will not kill him straight away. He then departs to see Blackavar attacking another guard, while Heisenthlay is leading the does out. Bigwig then strongly cuffs the guard, who takes his advice and does nothing, at least for the present. Bigwig takes his ragtag group and heads above ground, with a Captain Chervil wants you aimed at Avons on his way out. Above ground now, the weather has at last broken and it's raining. Bigwig feels that the weather is his and that it will aid him and go against Afrafa. As he races away and leaves the others, he can feel the first alert stampings, but he sees no adversaries just yet. The rain picks up a couple of levels as well as the wind. Bigwig issues an order to Blackavar, not knowing if it will work. He does not know yet that Blackavar is well up to this, and the does seem to be keeping up quite well. They want to get away for a chance at a new life. As this section closes, Bigwig's thoughts of what's finally of what's next finally catch up to him, and he wonders if he'll see Hazel or Kihar. We are now back in Ephrafa at a rather disturbing interrogation of Nelfilter. Woundwort is there and asking questions, along with a very defensive chervil and a rabbit that we'll all hate quite soon, the dreaded Vervain. Avons crashes in and tells everyone the news about Bigwig, the Doze and Blackabar. We learn that Bartia has a broken leg, which is a death sentence for a rabbit and most animals in the wild. The chase is on as Avons leads the group out. We're now back with the escapees and doubt is growing in Bigwig. He's thinking about the hopefully upcoming link-up with Hazel and company. So much is at stake and there is no way for him not to have some doubt. His strong sense of resolve takes over as he gets hold of himself once again. This is a tough part of the story and most readers must really feel for Bigwig at this moment. As he gives instructions, commands really, to the Afrafans, he sees that they immediately obey. One of the worst things possible happens with the appearance of Campion and a small patrol. Bigwig briefly reflects that he wishes that he and Campion had not come out on the opposite sides of this situation. They exchange some verbal jabs as Campion tries to convince Bigwig to give it all up. He won't, of course. Soon after this, Woundwort arrives along with others, including who Bigwig suspects is Vervain, based on his size and looks, an effective way for Richard Adams to slip that in. Blackavar speaks up in a conciliatory way, addresses him as Sir, and more or less says, Nice try. Also, that if it comes to a fight, the Doze will be something to contend with. As readers, we can easily believe that to, that to be the case, because at this point, they have had nothing to lose. Bigwig acknowledges Blackavar and simply waits for Woundwort's arrival. No more running for Bigwig, and psychologically, this seems like a smart move. Bigwig and Woundwort exchange words. We get some of Bigwig's best dialogue here, and Woundwort calls him a dirty little beast. Bigwig says one of the best lines in the book, quote, Frith sees you. You're not fit to be called a rabbit. May Frith blast you and your foul owls are full of bullies, end quote. Suddenly, the storm reacts with a great dazzling claw of lightning. It is then that Bigwig hears a voice. Your storm, Thlalira, use it. This voice seems to be meant by Adams to be supernatural. One might say it was in Bigwig's mind, but let's remember, this is a novel in which the supernatural definitely exists. So whose voice is it? Bigwig hearing of this voice spurs his action, and he's ready to break away from Woundwort and continue on. Things move quickly again. Kiha attacks the Ephrafen, seemingly out of nowhere, also bringing a message of hope and relief to Bigwig. Kihar is fierce, not only attacking Woundwort, but Vervain too. Blackavar is getting a wish fulfilled and attacks Campion. Woundwort is working to get his stunned party back to action, and then we hear the, re hear the reassuring voice of Silver, and it makes sense that it would be him. Soon we see more of our heroes. Silver smartly has rabbits set up that will operate much like military checkpoints. First Blackberry, then Bluebell, then Fiver. There are a couple of remarks on Bigwig's wounded shoulder. Slowly, the watership down rabbits get the does moving while the Afrafans are readying themselves for an attack. Terrifyingly, it becomes obvious that in spite of the attack of Kiha, in fact because of it, Woundwort has improvised a plan to continue the pursuit under cover. Bigwig has to admire his abilities of command under pressure. The Afrafan pursuers eventually hide by the Pridge, and it is from there that they'll attack if they can, having been rallied into what is called an attack position in the army. We learn from Kiha that Woundwort was attempting to fight him. 
What Bigwick has done up to this point is incredible, and he is now linked up with his own Warren Rabbits, who have everything for the getaway very well arranged. This really is a top-notch military operation that is going off as planned. However, to contrast with this, Woundwort has his rabbits ready to strike, and this after being completely surprised by the whole escape. Whatever you think of his morality, you cannot help but admire him as a military commander. Bigwig is needed closer to the boat. The does are asking for him, as you might expect. He is the only leader from Watership Down anyone in Esfrafra has known. Hazel has the rope bitten, probably more than half. In the end, the appearance of Woundwort gets all the does into the boat more quickly than anything else could have. And now Dandelion is separated from his comrades on the riverbank. Of all rabbits, and in this desperate situation, Hazel is ready to reluctantly leave him. Bigwig intervenes, and this beautifully creates some closure, going back to when Bigwig was ready to leave some rabbits behind at the crossing of the Embourne. As Woundward is about to signal his attack, Bigwig cries, There it is, referring to Kihar. This works. Dandelion dashes out. With Dandelion speed, gets on the boat. The rope breaks, and this amphibious operation is underway. Our heroes, now with a host of does, get away. Bigwig sees the face of a defeated woundwort as the little punt floats away. And so closes part three of Watership Down. Review of part three. After this chapter... Not that he's done doing brave things, the bravest rabbit in the book is undoubtedly Bigwig. He has achieved the seemingly impossible in the face of ridiculous odds, but he has done so as part of a team, and he has acted as part of that team, not concerned with glory, in spite of her having been easily in the most danger under pressure. The clearly stress-induced behaviour he displayed towards the beginning of part three is utterly forgiven now. If rabbits awarded medals, he would already be up for their highest honour. But a few mouthfuls of watership down grass will suffice before his final terrible battle. Next time, well, you will have to wait and see. As usual, at the end of a section of watership down, I will pause for a couple of episodes. Watch this space. Mm-hmm.